Well, hey, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes, and welcome to the Cutting It Right Bible Study, once again coming to you with a word for your heart and for your soul. We pray that all is well with you tonight, once again, as we open up the word of God. Amen. As always, we are streaming right now live over Facebook and YouTube and Spreaker.com. Tonight, we are going to continue in our series, The Christian and Sin. And tonight, we are going to be discussing God's prescribed order of victory. Have you ever heard of God's prescribed order of victory? Amen. So tonight, we'll be tackling that particular subject. So we pray that you will grab your Bible, uh, grab your smart device, and sit with us for a while as we uh, open up uh, the Word of God. Amen. Uh, this ministry, that's the word ministry, is a cross-centered ministry. We do preach and teach the message of the cross. It is embedded within all that we do and say here. Uh, we speak on a lot of different subjects, uh, but it is uh, the cross of Jesus Christ, which is at the center of all that we do and say. Amen. Uh, you can find us at that's the word org. You can also find us at our YouTube channel, which is That's The Word Ministries. You can also go over to Spreaker.com. That is our main podcast platform, among others that we are on, where you will find all of the podcasts uh, that the Lord has allowed us to produce over the years. Amen. So we just bless him and thank him for what he is doing. And we pray that you will join us in our uh, endeavor uh, to spread the message of the cross to those who don't know it. Amen. Spread the gospel to those who need to hear it. Amen. So join with us. You can do that simply by uh, becoming a supporter of this particular ministry by giving us your email address. And we'll just let you know what we're doing. We'll send you a copy of our newsletter. Amen. So we're about to get underway. We're ready. Uh, we're primed. We're pumped. Uh, God has been working. God has been moving. God has been speaking. And we'll see where we go tonight. Amen. Uh, we'll be right back with the start of our study. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, just, let's, just let me remind you that if you are watching over Facebook, that you can share out this page, that others also may be blessed. Amen. So tonight we are going to continue in our series, The Christian and Sin. The Christian and Sin. It is a very important subject. Uh, sin, unfortunately, will always remain a part of the Christian's life, uh, no, matter, uh, no matter what happens, because we have a sin nature within us. Amen. And so we need to be on guard and be prepared for the sin nature to always try and make havoc in our life. Amen. But there is a way out. There is a way through it. There is a way that we can harness the sin nature, not destroy it, not get rid of it. But it, there is a way that the sin nature can be harnessed. Amen. And so we want to talk about that tonight. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you once again for giving us this opportunity to open up your word. Lord, you see our heart right now. Lord, you know where we are. And Lord, I pray that you will uh, be with us. Uh, Lord, I pray you will lead us and guide us uh, into your truth here tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will continue to give me clarity of mind and heart, even as your word goes forth, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will uh, anoint uh, your word as it goes forth, anoint the ears and the hearts and the minds of those who will be under the sound of your word, even tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, we expect to hear from you tonight in this study. So, Lord, we bless you. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord, Cairo. Uh, pray, praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. God is good. Well, amen. God bless you, my brother Mark. God bless you, my brother Mark. All right, let's go into this. Uh, we've been talking here. We've been talking about the Christian and sin. 
And when we came, when we last week when we got together, uh, we there were several things that we were talking about. Last week we were talking about how not to handle sin. So just before we get into God's prescribed order, just before we begin talking about how we are to approach and handle sin in our lives, let's go over some of the things that we spoke about last week concerning how we are not to handle sin. Amen. First, we said that willpower is not the solution to sin. Amen. Willpower is not the solution. Uh, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, will yourself not to sin. I, you know, make promises and say, Lord, I'm not going to do this anymore. That does not work. That has its limitations. Amen. Secondly, we said that asceticism is not the solution to sin. And by asceticism, by asceticism, uh, we mean uh, those who will take uh, severe uh, measures measures in order to keep themselves uh, from sinning. Some uh, some use uh, flagellation, self-flagellation, beating themselves and, and, and starvation diets and all sorts of uh, things that go over the top. No, this is not God's prescribed order of victory. This is not how we are to handle sin in our lives. Amen. Number three, uh, we said that praying harder and fasting are not the solution to sin. Praying harder or uh, praying harder or fasting are not the solution to sin. Now you would say, what's wrong with that? As we're going to be speaking about tonight uh, further, there is nothing wrong with praying and fasting. Obviously, not one thing can be said to be wrong with praying and fasting. Uh, we are to pray. Prayer is always going to bless you when you pray. Uh, when God uh, instructs you to fast, it's always going to be of benefit. If God has told you to do so, there's a reason why God tells us to fast. Uh, however, once again, our it depends on if you are praying, where is your faith? And what happens, what inevitably happens is we begin to place our faith in the act of prayer the act of prayer, in the act of fasting. And that is where the mistake is made. We must be careful not to place our faith anywhere else, as we will find out further tonight, anywhere else except in the finished work of Christ. That is where our victory is. And so we must not put our faith in the fact that we have prayed. Yes, as you pray, you have faith. Now, that's once, once again, those are two different concepts. We are to pray in faith. Of course, Jesus instructed us. We are to pray in faith. But we are not to put our faith in the fact that we have prayed our praying. Prayer then will become an idol. It becomes a work. And therefore, God will not bless it. Amen? So we must be careful not to do that. So this is why we say uh, prayer and fasting are not the solution to sin because, once again, we begin to place our faith in the act. Prayer will bless you. So I don't want anyone to leave here saying this man has just told us that we should not pray and fast. No, 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 no. That is not what we are saying. Amen? All right, next, uh, we said that performing an abundance of works, performing an abundance of works is not the solution to sin. An abundance of works. And I told you the story about a pastor that I, uh, that I knew years ago uh, who informed me that the reason why uh, he was doing so much, the reason why he was running around and, and, and speaking at other places and, and just doing a lot of ministry work and the reason he told me when I asked him what what are you you know doing so much for he said he said the more he does sin goes away and I didn't know much about anything about what I speak now at that time but when I heard those words that didn't that didn't strike a chord as something that is right we cannot work our sin off we cannot work our sin away I'm gonna work so much that I won't be tempted. I'm going to work so much that I won't have time to sin. Yes, your flesh, your carnal nature, uh, you will, it will find a way to sin. 
So working it off, you cannot work it off. You cannot serve it off. You cannot minister sin away. It will not work. What you will find is sin will rise. You're trying to get it to go away by working and doing and so much you have to do. You will find that sin will make a strong reappearance in your life. Amen. That is that is a fact. Amen. Next, we said that speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. We didn't say this last week. Actually, this is this is something that I'm add, adding this week. Speaking in tongues, as good, as glorious, as right, as necessary, however you want to put it, uh, as it may be, speaking in tongues is not the answer to sin. It is not the solution to sin. Go lay before the Lord and begin speaking in tongues and everything is, is going to be all right. Once again, this is one of those things, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you. If you are one who does believe in speaking in tongues, nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with speaking in tongues, obviously. It's scriptural. However, you cannot tongue your way, speak in tongues your way. That, that, that's crazy English, I understand. But you cannot, uh, you cannot, speaking by speaking in tongues, you cannot cause sin to go out of your life. It, that's, that is not the purpose of tongues. Okay? So just because you speak in tongues, do not think that Satan is going to say, oh, I'm scared of this person because they're speaking in tongues. And so I'm not going to bother them. I'm not going to tempt them. No, that's not going to happen. And so once again, uh, speaking in tongues is not the solution to sin. Amen? So what is the solution to sin? The solution to sin. Since we are going to be dealing with sin, for the entirety of our life. We're going to be dealing with sin in one way, in one form or another. This is a fact. Once again, all due to the sin nature that dwells within us. It's embedded. We have a sin nature and it sins. It wants to sin. And so we have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. And there is a way to deal with sin. Let me give you this one first. Sin must be dealt with on the basis of Christ's finished work on the cross. This is the beginning. We're talking about God's prescribed order of victory over sin. Sin must be dealt with on the basis of Christ's finished work on the cross. You may say, you may say, you talk a lot about the finished work of the cross. That is everything. You have to understand that every single blessing that we have, every single blessing that we enjoy in Christ is due to the cross. What Jesus did there. And please understand when we talk about the cross, we are not talking about a wooden beam. We're not talking about the actual wood that Jesus died on. The tree that the wood came from. We're not, we're not talking about that. When we talk about the finished work of Christ on the cross, we're talking about what transpired there. What took place there. What was the grand result of Jesus' death at Calvary. And it was our victory. It secured our victory. It brought us justification it brought us deliverance. It brought us sanctification. It will eventually bring about our glorification. And those are just three powerful blessings of the cross. Every blessing that we have, we can be forgiven because of the cross. Because of the cross. Uh, the day of Pentecost was able to take place because of the cross. Every, listen, everything that we enjoy is because of the cross. This is why when it comes to sin, our faith, our faith must be in that. Now let me go here. The focus or object of our faith must be Christ and his finished work. We talked about this several weeks ago when we were talking about how do we live for God? How do we actually live for God? We live for God via, through 
the cross. That's how we live for Christ in the first place. Let me give you this scripture right here and that we talk about all the time. Let's break it down if we can. It says, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. That means that I died when Christ died. Nevertheless, I live. I'm alive. My heart is beating. I'm here. I'm breathing. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, and the life which I now live, I, I left out that part, in the flesh, in my body right now, this life that I now live, I live by the faith of or in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Gave himself for me speaks of his sacrifice on the cross. On the cross. That's what it talk that's what that's talking about. And so my faith is in Christ who died for me. That's how we live this life. We do not walk we walk by faith and not by sight. Remember that. We walk by faith. What kind of faith? It's not just any old faith. We walk by faith in Christ and his finished work. And not by sight. <laughs> That's what it's about. Amen? Next, we see this scripture here in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 6. It says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. As you receive Christ. How did you receive Christ? How did you come to faith in Christ? Through believing in who he is and what he has done. Listen, once again, when I prayed that prayer, when I asked the Lord to come into my heart, I didn't know any of what I'm talking about now. And most people don't know any of what we're talking about now. The Holy Spirit comes to them and they are burdened by their own sin. They are convicted by the Holy Ghost and they give their hearts to the Lord. But there must be a, a there is a faith factor. There is a faith factor. They begin to believe. They're not believing in the pastor who spoke. They're not believing, no, no, no. They're believing in the word that has spoken to them. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that they believe what Christ did was for them. That is why, let me go here real quick. Uh, that is why we read in uh, Romans uh, chapter number 10, uh, starting in verse uh, number nine, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe, believe, there's that faith, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, says you shall be saved. You have to believe in your heart. So that's the faith transaction that must be that must take place if an individual is going to get saved. When you got saved, that is what happened. When I got saved, that is what happened. Even though all I said initially was help. That's all I knew. Help. God saw the need behind the heart. He saw the need behind those words. And he saved me. He saved me. I have been convinced that what this pastor was saying, and once again, it wasn't the pastor. I didn't put my faith in what the pastor said. I put my faith in what the Bible said. The pastor was just a, a vessel being used. But I put my faith. I became convinced via the Holy Ghost that what was being spoken was truth. And I was convinced that I needed what he was talking about. If a person first does not recognize it, we're talking about the Christian in sin. If a person does not first recognize that they are a sinner, talking about those who are unsaved right now, if a person doesn't recognize that they are a sinner, then they will not get saved. That's bottom line. They can't get saved. I didn't get saved before because I was unconvinced that I was a sinner. Some people hear the message uh, uh, of the gospel the first time and the Holy Spirit takes them 
and changes them immediately. That's not so with everyone. I'm a witness to that. It, it doesn't happen overnight. It was a process for me. It was a period of time. But once I was convinced that I was a sinner, and once I was convinced of my own misery in my sin, this is when I, re I reached out and said, what is being spoken is true, and this is what I need. And that, that's when I put my faith in what Christ did for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I believed it. I believed it. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I believed it. It all rang true. And I put my faith and what Christ did for me, and I was transformed. That's how it's going to happen for everyone, for every single person. And so the same way that you came into Christ, which is through faith in what he did for you, is the same way. Let's go back to that scripture. That's the same way that you have to walk. In other words, live. We live for Christ in the same way that we came to Christ. We came to him placing our faith in him. We read that. We just read that in Galatians 2.20. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And we ought to continue to live our life in that way. What happens is we simply begin, and it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen in, a, in a bad kind of way. It happens because this is all that we know. Once we get saved, we are put on a regimen of works. We are put on a regimen of, you know, you have to go to church every Sunday, which, yes, you should. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Uh, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to, all those things are absolutely 100% necessary. So, once again, I, I don't want anyone to think that I'm speaking against doing these basic things. No, no. But once we get ourselves in this regimen, we don't want to move from this regimen, and our lives begin to be uh, our lives begin to be wrapped around this regimen, this regimen of works, and that what and that is what can become problematic. Please don't get me wrong when I'm when I'm saying this. I am not saying that you shouldn't go to church every Sunday, or you shouldn't read your Bible, or you shouldn't pray. As I said earlier, you shouldn't fast or any. No, 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 no. These are the spiritual disciplines. We are to do all of these things heartily. We are to do them much. We are to pray daily. We are to read our Bibles daily. We are to study our Bibles ferociously. All of these things are necessary for the Christian life. But it's not, as we said, it's not, we do not put our faith in the doing of it. As you do it, you have faith. I trust God. You pray, I trust God that he is going to work. I believe by his victory on the cross, I believe that God is going to give me those things that I need. I trust him as you pray, as you fast, as you read. Lord, open up my eyes uh, to behold great wonders out of your word. By faith, I, I, I believe you. So we put our faith as we pray. We do these, as we, as we put our faith in these things, we continue to do them. But just don't get caught up in the performance trap. Don't get caught up uh, in the performance trap because there is danger in the performance trap. Uh, we spoke about this uh, several weeks ago. The, here's how we live. Here's how the Christian lives. We put our focus, we put our focus on our works. This is what we do. How am I doing? We put, the, we put the object of our faith, our faith is in our performance. How well we do what we are doing. Am I doing it enough? Am I doing it right? That's not where our faith should be. Thirdly, our power source, when we are living in this way, uh, when our focus is on our works and the, our faith is in our performance, our power source is ourself. I'm doing this in my own strength. When I'm looking at what I'm doing and how am I doing it and, and how much I'm, I am the source of my own strength without knowing it. And finally, 
when we live this way, when we live this way, the results are going to be failure. They're going to be failure. Amen? So we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful how we live. Our focus ought to be on Christ and his finished work. The object of our faith is the same. We ought to put our faith uh, in Christ and his finished work. The power source then is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I'll tell you why in just a moment. And the results of this type of life is victory. Victory. Okay? Now, when you put your faith, when you have your faith properly placed in Christ and his finished work, when you understand that sin is dealt with on the basis of that same finished work, here is what inevitably happens. When this is done, the Holy Spirit is then able to work within us as he desires. As he desires. Now, if you don't do what I'm saying, if you don't, it's not me that's saying, if you don't do as scripture commands us, if you don't put your faith in Christ and his finished work, God is not going to leave you. He is not going to abandon you. The Holy Ghost is not going to walk out on you. None of these things are going to happen at all. But what you do, you, in a sense, understand what I mean? In a sense, you 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 sort of handcuff the Spirit of God. No, I'm not speaking blasphemy. You sort of handcuff the Spirit of God. You don't allow him to work as powerfully as he wants, as powerfully as he could, because the Holy Spirit works. Here we go. The Holy Ghost works within the parameters, within the confines of the finished work of Christ. So if I'm putting my faith somewhere else, the Holy Spirit is not going to be able to help me as he wants to, as he desires to. But when my faith is properly placed in the finished work of Christ, then that opens up the door for the Holy Ghost to move powerfully in my life, to help me, to, to move me, to speak to me. Once again, don't get the idea that the Holy Ghost is going to leave you. He's going to walk away from you because you don't, you're don't. you not properly keeping your faith in Christ and his finished work. Listen, none of us, none of us does this properly all the time. We tend to place our faith in things. We tend to place our faith in our activities. We, we, we slide off sometimes and we get it wrong, but we must be quick to correct ourselves or rather allow the Holy Ghost to correct us and bring us back, rein us in so that our faith is in Christ and his finished work. Now you say, how do I put my faith in Christ and his finished work? It's simply living with an abiding understanding that, Lord, you died for me. And, Lord, I don't need to struggle. I don't need to fight with this thing. I don't need... Lord, the victory has been won already at the cross. Many times we are fighting battles that have already been fought, have already been won, rather. Christ died for us. And understand what happens. Uh, let me go real quick to... Colossians chapter number two, Colossians chapter number two, and let me read uh, verse number 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's talking about the victory that we have in Christ. Satan, Satan, I'm reading from Expositor Study Bible here. Satan and all of his henchmen were defeated at the cross by Christ, atoning for all sin. Sin was the legal right Satan had to hold man in captivity. With all sin atoned, he has no more legal right to hold any one bondage. That's what transpired at the cross. This is one of the reasons why we say our faith needs to be in that finished work. Look at what happened at the cross. Satan was thoroughly, thoroughly defeated. And it was done openly in front of the entire universe. In front of the entire universe, it was done. He was soundly put down. Now, Satan still wields 
a measure of power. He still has a modicum of power, especially over those who do not know the Lord. And he will use and exercise that same limited power that he has over the child of God if we allow him. God has allowed him. Yes, he is defeated roundly and soundly, but God has yet, has yet allowed him to have a limited amount of power, but that limited amount of power he has will overcome us and overtake us if we don't look to the finished work of Christ. Satan will have a field day on us. But no, what it says in Romans uh, chapter number 6 and verse uh, number 15, this is a powerful verse that you need to underline, highlight, uh, and highlight in your Bibles. Here's what it says. Verse number 14. Uh, Romans 6 and verse number 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, the fact that scripture says here that sin shall not have dominion over you is a very, very strong indication. And he would not have said it if this was not the case. It is a very strong indication that sin will take dominion over you unless certain things are in place. That is properly placed faith. If you don't have or understand where your faith should be and needs to be, Satan will, child of God, Holy Ghost filled child of God, speaking in tongues, Holy Ghost filled child of God, the, the, the sin will exercise dominion over you in some area of your life. Now, see, we look at big sins. We look at adultery and fornication and and all sorts of sins that we sort of we sort of put them on a, a higher level. The, 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 those sins that those are the sins that we look at. But there are other sins. There are sins of the heart, sins of the mind. There, there are other sins, sins in word, things that we say, attitudes that we hold, grudges. There are so many other ways that sin can have dominion over us, a bad temper. All of these things are sin. And the uh, uh, sin and, and the sin nature, rather, the sin nature uh, will dominate us if we don't have the proper object of faith. This is what will happen. And so we must be careful. We must be careful to place our faith in Christ. At all times, keep our faith in Christ and his finished work. Because if not, if not, our lives uh, will become very difficult as it pertains to serving the Lord. Amen. That's going to be a problem. So <clears throat> that is a God's prescribed order. We need to base, as we deal with sin, we need to place our faith in his finished work. Okay, now let's talk about reading our Bibles for a moment. Some may say, some may say, rightly so, that, well, I put my faith in the word of God. I put my faith in God's word. There's nothing wrong with putting your faith in God's word, but understand, understand what the centerpiece of God's word is. We're talking about scripture. What is the centerpiece of the Bible? The Bible is the story of, of Christ and him crucified from Genesis chapter number three, where we read the first, where we read the first prophecy concerning the coming Messiah. The whole Bible is concerned with the redemption of man, bringing man back to God. And we see this taking place in the lives and situations of, of, of many different people. We're talking about the Abrahams and the Isaac and the Jacobs and the, and the different prophets and all the other people. Good people, bad people, in between people. We see kings and prophets and all sorts of people uh, dealing with the fact that there will be a coming Messiah. And all the prophets spoke of him in some way, some more, some less. But they all spoke about this coming Messiah, the entire Bible. So when you put, when you say you put your faith in the Bible, that, that's a true statement. The true statement, but understand what you mean when you say that. You're saying that you are putting your faith in the core understanding and belief of the Bible, which is Christ and him 
crucified. Amen. So listen, in the 80s, I can remember back in the 80s, and, and I maybe maybe you have done that too. Uh, those of you who are as old as I am, I don't know who out here is old as I am, uh, but uh, I can remember in the 80s, uh, dealing with sin as a young man uh, and going out and buying scripture memory cards. I had those old scripture memory cards and I had scripture memory booklets and I went out and I bought scripture memory kit, the entire kit. And what it did was uh, I would read these scriptures and it was sort of a, uh, it would help you to memorize scripture. And I still have those things today. Uh, listen, there's nothing wrong. I put myself on a regimen of of learning scripture verses pertaining to whatever I may be dealing with at a particular time. And I don't believe there's anything wrong. I don't see any anything wrong. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with memorizing scripture. Okay? I don't see anything wrong with memorizing scripture. Amen? Thank God we have scripture. Once again, the reason why we have scripture is because of the finished work of the cross. That, that's one of the blessings. We have his word. However, once again, as I did this, I can remember, uh, I can remember uh, dealing with situations in my life and and quoting scripture, quoting scripture, and it would tell me you have to, you may have to, re, you may have to quote the scripture again, and you keep quoting the scripture over and over again until the temptation goes away. That's what that, that's what these booklets said. You keep quoting the scripture until until the temptation goes away. And I followed through. I followed through. I kept quoting scripture until the temptation went away. But now, is this how we are supposed to deal with sin? Now, we look at the case of Jesus. Jesus is Jesus, okay? Jesus cannot put his faith in his finished work because he's Jesus, he had not gone to the cross yet when he, uh, when he was dealing with uh, Satan uh, in the uh, in the wilderness. He was dealing, he was dealing with Satan directly, and so he used the word of he used his word. It was his word that he was u- using against Satan. So, so, so Christ can do that. Christ could do that. Uh, we read, uh, we read in. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 11. And they overcame him, talking about Satan, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their li- love their lives unto the death. What does it mean t- by the blood of the lamb? That's talking about the cross. That's talking about the blood. The devil cannot handle the blood of Christ. How do you deal with how do you deal with the devil? You cross him out. That's how you deal with the devil. You cross him out. I don't mean I don't mean cross him out. I don't mean that kind of thing. It's by the finished work of the cross that we deal with the devil, that we deal with the temptations. That's how we deal with sin. And the word of our testimony our testimony. What is your testimony? What is your testimony? What God has, your testimony is what Christ has done for you through the finished work of the cross. That's the word of your testimony. Your testimony is what Christ has done for you through the cross. He saved you through the cross. And that is how we deal with the devil. That's how we deal with the devil. Now, when we learn this, when we learn this and we begin to put this into practice, you will find that Satan will be hamstrung. Understand what I mean by hamstrung? He will not be able to, he, he won't be able to deal with you as he wants to. He wants to put a stranglehold on you and I. He wants, he, he, he wants to grab us and hold us. He wants to put us in bondage. But when we learn, and I'm going to call it a secret, but it's not really a secret. When we learn the secret of how to deal uh, with sin. And the only reason I call it a secret is because many don't know. Many haven't understood it yet. When people learn how to deal with 
sin, how to overcome sin, Satan will be put aside to a, a certain measure. Now, will Satan go away? No. Will sin go away? No. Will you never sin again? No. Will you be tempted? Yes. All of these things will ring will still ring true. Once again, we're talking about the intensity of that sin and we're talking about the frequency of sin in your life because you have now placed your faith in the finished work overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. That's how you deal with the devil. That's God's prescribed order of victory. Amen. Now, listen, there are so many things when we talk about, and as we close this down tonight, when we talk about, when we talk about the finished work of Christ and how we live for Christ and how to deal with the devil, what we are inevitably talking about, we are talking about sanctification. That's what it's all about. Everything we've talked about today, uh, tonight, talking about God's prescribed order is sanctification. Sanctification. Progressive sanctification. That is what this, that is what this is all about. Our sanctification is first progressive. Secondly, our sanctification is practical. And thirdly, our, our sanctification is personal. You have to deal with this on a daily basis. You choose to sin or not to sin. Yes, the choice to sin is inevitably left up to you and I. Will I choose to live for the Lord today? And I know the answer is yes. Yes, I desire to live for the Lord. Yes, I desire to do his will. Yes, I want him to speak to me. Yes, I, I, I want to be a part of his program. Yes, 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 a thousand times, yes. But once again, Satan will come. Satan will come. And once you have, once you come into this knowledge, into this truth, once you step in to placing your faith in the finished work, you will find that Satan will test you. He will come. He will test you. And the Lord will allow it. Now, why would the Lord give me the answer to my sin problem and then allow Satan to come and test me and tempt me? Why would he do that? Because great faith must be tested greatly. What great faith? I'm not talking about the amount of faith you have. I'm talking about the greatness of your faith. Faith in Christ and his finished work is the greatest faith that you can have. And so great faith, that type of faith must be tested. Do you really believe? Do you really believe? And God will allow, once again, he will allow Satan to do what he does. But once again, never believe. Satan may instigate and he may, he may be seeming to orchestrate, but God is the one who regulates. Always. God regulates. He has every single thing under control. Never, never forget that. God has you. So there is the prescribed order of victory and we pray uh, that we all will begin uh, to live in this way, in a greater way. Because listen, there's a work, uh, there's a work, excuse me, there's a work that God wants to do uh, in this world. There's a work that God wants to do in this world. We are living in a world uh, that is becoming more and more corrupt as the day goes on. Wherever you live, well, whatever's going on in your world where you are, it's happening all around the world. Sin, Satan, is taking over. It seems to be taking over. Sin and corruption. God is in control. God is in control. And as long as we, the church, are here, Satan will not be able to accomplish all that he desires. But once the church is gone, the gloves will come off. Satan's gloves, so to speak, will come off and he 
will immerse himself into this world. This world system will become as corrupt as it is going to get once the church is gone. And that day is coming soon. But until that day, until that day, what are we doing? What are we doing? We need to be a church. We need to be a church that is praying. We need to be a church uh, that are that is on our knees because there are people that are dying and going to a Christless eternity. And one of the reasons why this little ministry, I'll call it a little ministry, I don't care. One of the reasons uh, why uh, this little ministry exists is to make his word known. To make his word known to those who will hear. I would love... For I would love for his word to go viral. I'm not in, I'm not interested. Listen, we talk about subscribers and we talk about followers. We talk about that all the time. And it's it's sort of shadowy. It, it, we would love to, to have all of that. But here's what the bottom line is. We simply want people to hear the word. We know that this ministry is sort of in a niche category. And we know that everybody's not going to flock to what we have to say. We are a preaching and teaching ministry. We are focused on the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, we speak on a lot of different subjects, but our focus uh, is the cross of Christ. And I know that that is not something that people are going to say, hey, that sounds good. Hey, this is a good. I don't expect it. I don't expect it. But for those, but for those who will join us as we uh, endeavor to spread this gospel, uh, we ask for your prayers. We ask for your prayers as we continue to do uh, the work of God. Kristen Hadassah says, sometimes, uh, says sometimes uh, after we sin, God allows us to walk through the valley of Achor so he can show us how far he can pull us out, but we must seek his face through it all. Amen. Amen. God will allow, uh, God will allow these times uh, in our life just to show just how faithful he is. Amen. So, so don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Listen, you can look at Elijah. You can look at what happened with the life of Elijah. After this great victory uh, on Mount Carmel, uh, and all that God did perform the miracle right there, uh, yet and still, it was a very, very short time later that we see Elijah running for his life because of a letter that he received from an evil woman, uh, which was Jezebel at that time. Uh, and we see him running for his life. And so after what happens after victory is important. What happens after victory? After victory, we need to be prepared because the enemy will come. Uh, something very basic and simple. Sometimes, and I can I can attest to this, you know, in my in my lifetime, uh, leaving church after being blessed, after God has moved, after God has touched, uh, and leaving church, and how the enemy will 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 sort of come almost immediately. Sometimes after. Uh, you've just been blessed by the Lord because the enemy wants to snatch what God has done for you out of your heart. That's how the enemy works. So I thank you, Kristen, for that uh, that bit of insight. It is so true. Uh, he will allow us sometimes to walk through that uh, through that valley, uh, but he will pull us out because he will never leave us or forsake us. Amen. So I pray that you will continue to pray for us. Pray for this ministry as we continue to move forward in the work of the Lord. We've, you know, we, we've heard from the Lord many times. Uh, we continue to hear from the Lord, but uh, you know, sometimes you hear a word. Sometimes you hear a word uh, that um, listen. Sometimes you hear a word that sort of spurs you on. And uh, we, we've we've heard a word uh, very recently. And uh, this ministry will continue uh, to move forward in spite of everything and anything. This ministry is all about uh, the word of God, the cross of Christ, amen? So join us in prayer as we continue uh, to take this message forward, amen? Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name tonight. We thank you, uh, Lord, for allowing us once again this opportunity to open up your word. Uh, Lord, we know that some of these things that we may have said, uh, Lord, may not be familiar to some, uh, but Lord, we pray that you will begin to Open up your word to your people, Lord Jesus, and, and how we are to personally deal with sin uh, in our lives. We are supposed to, we are, uh, first and foremost, we, we should recognize uh, our sin uh, and know that 
we do sin uh, from time to time. But Lord, there is a way that sin can be uh, waylaid and overcome, and that is through the finished work of the cross. Lord, we put our faith in you and what you have done, Lord Jesus. So to have your way, bless us together right now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want to bless, I want to rather, I want to thank uh, each and every one. Amen. Uh, well, we, we we thank you, Cairo. We thank you, Cairo. Amen. Um, God is good. He he gives us the uh, he gives us the grace that we uh, continue doing what he has called us to do. Amen. Just continue uh, to pray for us. Uh, we thank you, Cairo. Uh, we thank you, Kristen. I believe this is the first time that I've seen you, so uh, God bless you, uh, Kristen. I thank you for once again for your uh, timely insight. Uh, tonight. God bless you, my brother Mark, and those who will be watching inevitably who do uh, come on and, and watch later, either uh, by Facebook or by YouTube. Uh, God bless you, and we thank you for joining us. Amen. Once again, this is That's the Word Ministries. We are a cross-centered ministry. Uh, we, we preach and teach the message of the cross. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and uh, we just bless him and thank him uh, for all that he is uh, doing uh, in our midst. Amen. Let's hear another word from Christian as she's here before we close out. After Solomon came around full circle, he realized that keeping the commandments and statutes of God was the essence of life. Thank God for sending your only son to show us your heart and statutes. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Well, amen. I want to invite you I want to invite you to continue to be with us as we will be here Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m., uh, continuing in our series entitled The Strong Tower. We've been rejoicing in the most powerful name in the universe. That is the name of Jesus Christ. We've been having some powerful sessions here on Sunday morning, uh, so we pray that you will join us once again this coming Sunday morning, as we said, at 11.30 a.m., or you can catch the replay, as many do, on Sunday. Amen. Don't forget Monday night. Monday night we're here also uh, with the Line by Line podcast at 7 o'clock p.m. We are currently in the middle of chapter number 5 of the book of Matthew. Yes, the Sermon on the Mount. We're going through as we do one verse at a time. Amen. That's what we do here on the Line by Line podcast. Amen. Tuesday night. Tuesday night at 8 o'clock we are continuing in our series Lighting the Darkness. We're looking at the role of the child of light, who's who we are, amen? So join us at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. And on to, uh, next week, next week we're going to begin, uh, we're going to begin a study. Uh, once again, I'm not sure exactly which one. The Lord is going to have to have two studies in my mind to do. Uh, it may not be either one. Once again, we're going to get on our knees and we're going to ask the Lord for insight uh, to show us exactly um, which topic will be next. I know what topic is in my mind, but I want to make sure that I have the mind of the Lord. So join us. Join us on Wednesday night as we pick up a new topic in our first principle, first principles of the Christian life. Amen? Well, I want to thank each and every one once again. Thank each and every one of you for watching. Don't forget to go over to, if you have not yet done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget also to go over to our website, which is that's the word org, and leave us your email address, and we'll send you out a copy of our newsletter, just letting you know what we're doing here in the ministry. Uh, also, while you're there, you can download a copy, a free copy of our ebook entitled uh, "Remaining Unmovable: Seven Keys to Quality Longevity in Christ." Amen. There's also a link on our website if you would like to uh, get a copy of our book, which we have written entitled The Lights in the Windows, Eight Basic and Powerful Principles on Evangelism. That is available on Amazon.com. So don't forget to go over to our website. Amen. God is good. God is moving. God is working. And we bless his name and thank him for all that he is doing. And once again, I want to thank all of you for being with us. Amen. Well, I'm Pastor Michael Jakes, and I want to uh, shout out to those of you who do listen in on Spreaker.com from across the United States and around the world. We see you, and we thank you for your support. We thank you for downloading our podcast from where you are. Uh, we pray that you are being blessed. Amen. 
So this is me, that's you, and we will see you next time. May God bless you.